pressure from the vets, uh, knowing that we were doing, probably doing the wrong thing, basically. And you, you know, I felt that we had to, we were using too much. And um, yeah, it was a learning curve, but I think we've got over that now. We've done the loop and we don't need it, basically. Colostrum quality and your hygiene within the shed, basically, and making sure your sheep was fit. That's, that's key. If your sheep isn't fit, your colostrum isn't fit, basically, and there's not enough of it. So if you, if you do your basics right, the rest of it, I think the rest will follow, follow suit. So I metabolically profile all the get the vet out, we do bloods, pre lamb bloods, um, and then um, condition score them as well at the same time. So we know roughly what's going on to whether we're gonna have any, what sort of issues we're gonna have with it, basically. Just get the basics right. Just, just feed them well and get the basics right. That's all I can say, really. And, and hygiene within the shed. If you're lambing inside, hygiene is key. I, I, I really do believe that that is something which is, you know, you've got to keep on top of your dirty straw and everything else. I just think it's a breeding ground, basically, for coli and for joint ill. You know, if you don't, if you don't get that that in right, it gets you. Basically, they're they're they're, they're bedded up as and when. Um, I do like to keep quite a bit of straw in with them because I find that you can get foot problems with the straw overheating if they're in here for too long. Um, you start building up your scald within the shed, so I try to keep it keep it as nice as possible for them. Um, I do. I've got a fan down the other end of the shed. If it does get too hot in here, I will turn the fan on and blow that out just to cool the shed back down again um, and yeah it's just a lovely feed you know nice feed faces to feed on and um, yeah it just yeah the system works it is a it is a purpose-built shed for the job I feed the freeze dairy cow colostrum yeah I'm lucky enough to have access to that um, and every year and when she goes into the pen the milk is checked and if there's not enough colostrum there the lambs are topped up with either cow's colostrum or, you know, made up colostrum. Um, it is, yeah, just one of those anal things. All the triplets are topped up religiously, routinely with, with colostrum, regardless of how, what a milk status is. Because I just think that, that that's quite important just to get as much into them as you can, really. When we think about lambing or some of the problems that we encounter, so things like watery mouth um, or joint till to, to some extent, but infectious abortion as another example, they crop up in the last couple of weeks or at the time of lambing. And often that's the time where a lot of the phone calls happen to veteran advisors, you know, I've got a problem, I need to sort it out. But the reality is, and an infectious abortion outbreak is a good example, in the vast majority of cases, as a vet, I'm, I'm actually totally powerless. There might be a couple of things that I can do, but the real way that I can add value is to do it at a good time of year, where the costs are going to be controlled and small, rather than when you're fed up because it's going wrong in the ramish shed, and, and you are right to be, it's, you know, you have worked all year and realising it only happens once at Lamin. So I think the key thing is think about it in enough in advance. Think about things like here, forage analysis. We should be doing that before, you know, at Christmas time. We should be getting our diet sorted well in advance. And then the preparation is really key in order to sort of have the best lamin we can really. I don't think farmers necessarily want to be given antibiotics. I think the reason and the discussions I've had with my own clients about reducing oral antibiotics, often the reason that folks are using them is because they want to be doing absolutely everything they can for the lambs that they're working with and they just see that as a tool to be doing absolutely everything you can and it's actually from a place of diligence rather than because there's any excitement about using antibiotics so I think the motive is, is right but I think actually if I really want to see your sheep business succeed, then what the thing that's going to do that is you health, you condition, you milk yield, because ultimately that's lamb growth and lamb sold. Now, if that starts going wrong, because my ewes aren't thin enough or my feeding goes wrong, the first thing that that manifests with is weak lambs, poor colostrum. So really, if, if if we really want to do absolutely everything we can for the whole sheep business, it's about thinking not just about the, the getting the watery mouth right, it's about the whole thing. So I guess what I'm saying is if we get everything 
as good as we can so that we aren't relying on that antibiotic. It actually might be the gift that keeps on giving for the production of a sheep flock because a watery mouth perpetual issue in a sheep flock is a symptom of something else and if we can crack that we might, have, we might solve a lot of other issues on farm.